Mm. I love this burger, so delicious. These menu items may be gone, but the deep-seated memories keeps them alive. Let's take a look at 10 discontinued fast food burgers you'll never see again. Uh, the McDonald's McJordan. Michael Jordan! If you were around in the early 90s, chances are you've heard of the basketball player this sandwich is named after. That's right, in Chicago, there's only one true king of the court, and that's Michael Jordan. The legendary athlete had earned himself so much notoriety that the fine people over at McDonald's decided to create a burger in his honor. The McJordan starts as a simple cheeseburger served on a sesame seed bun. It has pickles, raw onion, bacon, and barbecue sauce. Don't feel bad if you have no recollection of this menu item. What do humans do with these things? It was only served in the Chicago area for a limited time. Sadly, this burger isn't on the menu anymore, and the only chance of getting a glimpse into what it tasted like is to order a customized version of it yourself. You can still do the sandwich justice, but some fast food connoisseurs say that it just isn't the same without the old circular bacon that used to come atop the burger. Alas, unless Jordan decides to come out of retirement one more time, the chances that you'll ever get to try a real McJordan are slim to none. This burger is unfortunately going to go down in history as just another piece of 90s nostalgia. The Taco Bell Beefer. How do you say taco in Mexican? Let's take a little trip back in Tex-Mex history. The year is 1979. You just bought a fresh pair of bell-bottom pants at your local mall and you're driving home in your Volkswagen bus. The next My Sharona is blaring on the radio as you stop off at Taco Bell to get some food on the way home. When you walk inside, you know exactly what menu item you're going to order. No tacos today. You want Taco Bell's less than famous Sloppy Joe sandwich known only as the Bell Beefer. That's right, back before Taco Bell made the switch to solely Tex-Mex cuisine, they tried their hands at a number of obscure fast food ideas. One of these ideas was the Bell Beefer. This was the Bell's counter-strike to the popularity of burger chains. The sandwich came complete with Taco Bell's proprietary taco meat, lettuce, diced onions, mild sauce, and of course, a bun. For a slight upcharge, you could even get cheese and tomatoes on this strange fast food amalgamation. Cheese? While there are some fans of this sandwich who would do anything to have it, Taco Bell employees spilled the refried beans and let loose why the sandwich was now missing. It simply didn't sell. There are those who lament the disappearance of the strange sandwich, but we'd simply point you to the cans of sandwich at your local grocery store if you're looking to fill the void left by the Bell Beefer. You can even try adding a little bit of mild taco sauce to it, if you're feeling spicy. Wendy's Bacon and Blue Burger Every time I go to Wendy's Wendy's has always been able to carve out a slice of the fast food market just for itself. Many folks like the unique menu items like the frosty, chili, and baked potatoes. Some of the chain success can be attributed to their gourmet burgers that they frequently launch. Nearly every season, Wendy's is releasing a new sandwich for its customers to try and the case was no different with the black and blue burger. This sandwich was constructed with one of Wendy's square quarter pound beef patties, four strips of applewood smoked bacon, sautéed onions on a brioche bun. What about the blue color, you might ask? Well, this particular burger wasn't complete without a handful of Wisconsin blue cheese crumbles. Fans loved the item and praised both the taste and cost as it was rolled out. As time went on and demand for the burger increased, Wendy's was hit with logistical and quality control problems that left many customers with a less than satisfying rendition of the item's true potential. That they would shove these into their intake orifices. It turns out that you need to be able to put the fast into a fast food burger, or it's quite simply just not good for business. After some hard thinking, Wendy's decided to scrap the burger and there is still no trace of its existence on the menu. Burger King's Whopperito. Care about your burritos more than my children, Nick? While it may not truly be a burger, this fast food item is a perfect example of when something's not broken, you shouldn't fix it. Burger King rolled out the Whopperito in 2016 when they announced that they would be offering their famous Whopper in a new package. The Whopperito was a bit of an abomination. It came with seasoned ground beef, tomatoes, onions, lettuce, pickles, and queso all served inside of a soft flour tortilla. It's got all the ingredients of the Whopper wrapped up like a burrito. Customers were initially skeptical, claiming that some of the flavors would clash horrendously, but alas, sales were steady upon its release. Whether it be an issue with supply and demand or ingredients, no one knows for sure, but it wasn't long before Burger King axed this fabled item from its menu. If you're looking for tacos, you'd best take your business to the bell. It turns out that sometimes it's best to just stay in your lane, and as of this date, Burger King has no intention of bringing the Whopperito back for another victory lap. McDonald's Hula Burger Pineapple! Have you ever wanted to stroll through the golden arches, walk up to the counter, and demand a full serving of fruit with your meal? Well, if that's the case, then you would have loved this next creation. The McDonald's Hula Burger was initially created as an alternative for Catholics on Lent, seeing as how many practitioners of the faith do not eat meat on Fridays. 
The Huo Burger was free from red meat and instead consisted of a thick slice of grilled pineapple topped with cheese on a bun. It was introduced in 1963 and while some people did seek it out as an alternative on Fridays, it became glaringly apparent early on that the Huo Burger was being vastly outsold by the filet fish Seeing as how these two menu items were basically in direct opposition with each other, McDonald's decided to choose the lesser of two evils, the winner is, and got rid of the Huo Burger shortly after it was introduced. While we applaud the inventive nature of this fast food creation, sometimes it's better to stick with what works. At least we can take solace in the fact that thanks to the sacrifice of the Hula Burger, the filet fish was able to thrive as a pescatarian alternative on Fridays or any other day of the week. The Hula Burger walked so that the filet fish could run or swim. And there's something oddly comforting about that notion. McDonald's Arch Deluxe. Did you serve me at the McDonald's in Winchester service station? If you're a fan of Mickey D's, chances are you may have heard of this next burger, McDonald's Arch Deluxe. In 1996, McDonald's launched an extensive marketing campaign, all aimed at attracting a broader client base. The huge advertising budget rivaled that of a Hollywood movie. Hi, I'm movie genius Michael Bay. Many customers cite this as the reason that the burger was so expensive. Fans of McDonald's were not exactly pleased to see the larger price point for what was arguably an inferior product. The Arch Deluxe ingredients were run-of-the-mill and included a quarter-pound beef patty, bacon, lettuce, tomato, onion, and all of the regular burger staples. This was also accompanied by a signature sauce composed of mustard and mayo, not a far cry from the franchise's Mac sauce. It wasn't long before demand died out for the Arch Deluxe significantly and the menu item was shelved due to its lack of sales. We're not necessarily saying that this burger should stay away, but we expect it to be some time before McDonald's awakens this one from its crypt. Whataburger's Chop House Cheddar Burger. For burger patrons in the select areas where Whataburger outlets can be found, the Chop House Cheddar came bounding onto menus in 2009. It included two beef patties, was topped with grilled onions, two slices of crispy bacon, melted shredded cheddar cheese, and a steak sauce that was to die for. All this was served up on a toasted bun. It took no time at all for this rising star burger to climb in popularity and customers were quickly hooked. It was dismissed from menus only to reappear time and again up until 2016, before it vanished for good. Oh, you don't want to go. There hasn't been a single sighting of the burger since then, yet many fans hold out hope that it'll one day return to the menu. Unlike many of the items on this list, a petition was started to cry for the burger's return. It remains to be seen if Whataburger has any intentions of listening. As they say, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Here's hoping they don't make us wait too long. Wendy's Pretzel Bacon Pub Cheeseburger. So I'm just gonna have my soft pretzel, I'll get to work and I'll be super productive. Here we are again. We told you that Wendy's liked to experiment with limited time burgers, and the next item on our list is a true testament. Meet the Wendy's Pretzel Bacon Pub Cheeseburger. This is a perfect example of a name being just as big of a mouthful as the item itself. Probably one of the most popular items on our list, Wendy saw incredible demand for the sandwich. The sheer amount of mouth-watering ingredients made this a mammoth-sized burger. Fried onions, pickles, Winster cheese, bacon, beer cheese, and honey mustard were all lovingly crafted in between an unforgettable pretzel bun. Some claim the true popularity of the burger lay in the signature roll that hasn't been seen since. There were many different versions of the sandwich that launched, but for whatever reason it disappeared and hasn't been seen since 2013. Something about the texture of the pretzel bun surrounding the burger has had fans clamoring for this one's return. As with many of the items on our list, Wendy's is keeping tight-lipped about whether the Pretzel Bacon Pub Cheeseburger will ever come out of retirement. Until they do, it looks like you'll be visiting your favorite old-timey pub to satisfy this unique craving. Burger King's Angry Whopper. This is a food war! The war between the Whopper and the Big Mac has been waged for decades. Friendships have ended, marriages have crumbled, and battle lines have been drawn in this great battle for burger supremacy. Okay, so we're being a bit dramatic. But it's true that if you talk to most fast foodies, they're going to have a preference between which sandwich they like best. Is it going to the King or the Arches? Well, the one thing that the Whopper has over the Big Mac is a spicy variant. If you can't stand the heat, you're going to want to get out of the kitchen. <laughs> In 2016, Burger King decided to break into the spicy food market once again with their Angry Whopper. Many people noted the vibrant hot sauce-infused red bun, since it truly looked like a striking alternative to a regular Whopper. It turned out not to be a burger for the faint of heart. It boasted spicy onion ring petals, angry sauce, jalapenos, along with all the ingredients that put the Whopper on the map. There were a few variations of the sandwich, with one that included a regular bun to dampen the inferno a little bit. For whatever reasons, demand for the menu item decreased, and Burger King made the decision to remove it from their menu. Some people would claim that the burger was just a bit too spicy for the average customer, but there are a few spice lovers who would beg to disagree. It remains to be seen if this burger will ever make a return, but until we see the invention of the spicy Big Mac, this is one chapter of fast food history where Burger King still holds the crown. 
McDonald's Big and Tasty. I want, I want something! Sometimes you want to have your burger and eat it too. That was McDonald's goal when they set out to create a series of burgers to go up against Burger King's Whopper. They weren't secure enough in the idea that they had their own flagship sandwich, and instead wanted to humiliate Burger King on its own turf. Thus, the Big and Tasty was created. This sizable sandwich consisted of a McDonald's signature sesame seed bun, lettuce, tomato slices, sliced onions, Emmental cheese, and Big Tasty sauce, which was a smoky and savory alternative to Mac sauce. If that wasn't enough ingredients for you, you could even add bacon and get yourself a Big Tasty bacon. Even though the Big and Tasty never quite earned the fame that the Whopper had garnered, it was a mainstay on the menu for just over a decade before it was discontinued in 2011. Sometimes you just can't compete with the king. I'm a king. Some people still mark the Big and Tasty among their favorite menu items that McDonald's has ever released. It's still sold in some locations outside of the United States if you have an absolute hankering that can't be satisfied. But it remains to be seen whether it will ever return for an encore back at home. Got a favorite burger you miss? Let us know. And tap or click for another great video. Hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell.